All right. And let me move you onto the ship now. Hopefully, I did this correctly. I am really hoping I did. <laughs> All right. Dun 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 dun. dun. Oh, nice. Where on the map should we be? Um, you should be like left. down left. You messed it I, up, Serena can't see. I don't have any light, but I see our tokens. I, can't see. It's, I, see, I see none I of see that. I see token, but no you light. should have light because I have super light. Oh, well, let's just do this then. I don't have sight myself, so it's not a light issue. It might be a sight issue. Let me yeah, zoom in to make sure. I don't think we have sight, but we do have... Okay, I see it's a token now after zooming all the way out. Yeah, I found my token. So your sea light know. has sight. We should have... Am I in a position where there's no light by any chance? You like, should have a lot of light there, to be honest. If you copied yeah, Serena's yeah. token, then she should have light anyway. Yeah, everyone so. should have sight. Uh, I don't know who that is, but I'm going to give him sight. This that is a weird there. bug we encountered all the time with RR, too. I haven't encountered this bug since then, so... Yeah. It's the same bug, though. Uh, Are the light sources dynamic set up properly? Check dynamic lighting. I just put on dynamic lighting, though, or um, global lighting. Turn off global right, lighting and give us uh, range light and see if that changes it, maybe. No, 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 no. Reload, reload. Reload? reload. Let me go over here reload. with you. Good. Oh, we're going back to here. Nope. Nothing with that? Nope. Still nothing. All right, so let me throw... Yeah, because I threw the opacity up to maximum, which... Okay, no, you should have light. That's different opacity. Is it not? Global illumination on. I also don't think I'm restricted by dynamic lighting unless this is a huge room I'm in. It's you're you're in a huge room. Alright, let me try I apologize about this. Can I duplicate this page easily? Right. No, I can duplicate this page easily. Go to the options, there's a duplicate yeah. page option. Actually, uh, it's the. I think it's on the button if you hover over the tab. Yeah, it was. I don't see anything on the copy though, so that's kind of useless to me. Technical difficulties. I don't know. <laughs> Fun technical difficulties. <laughs> right. I'm willing to go ahead and swap out the laundry while I. Yeah, if you want to take a, like a quick five-minute break or something while I sort this out. Let's do a ten-minute break because it could take a little while. Yeah, take a ten minute break while I sort this out. I wonder what happens if I just move Alana straight sideways. You should eventually... I haven't seen any walls. Wow, that's a far wall. Yeah, the walls themselves, you understand when you actually can see why I did the walls the way I did? Yeah, but like, so like right there. I'm able to fit through all the walls. Unless... No, you don't actually... There are very few walls. Right. You'll understand when you see it. Walls. Go down. Where we're going. We don't need walls. Yeah. Can you go down? Going straight down. Hmm. Yeah. It just did not respond very well with. Uh, God damn it. So there's nothing here. Rejoin his DM. Yeah. It's acting like. Uh, it's acting as if dynamic lighting isn't working correctly. All right. Let me go into here then. If you can see everything, that doesn't affect. That's probably the issue there. Oh, that was the issue something. there. Yeah, I saw what the issue was. That I can okay. still pass through the wall over here. Uh, I yeah, I put on. I didn't put on restrict movement. There we go. No, I'm. Still, yeah, like yeah. I had a lot of when I was. <laughs> yeah, I didn't actually, actually have on restrict movement, and I actually accidentally clicked um, fog of war. So that was. Alana mistake. got like all the way over here earlier. Yeah, I accident. I didn't take fog of war on initially. That was the two issues. Okay. But yeah, this is, in essence, the ship. Falani, you don't want to be off the ship. Why not? Maybe we want Yeah, this to here be. is the Golden Dragon, which is the ship. Um, I'm going to wait for everyone to get back before I really describe it, but pretty much what you see is what you get for the most part. I also thought of something really dumb that Alana can do if we ever need to get anybody off the ship. Yeah. Levitate. <laughs> Do that for enemies. 
Yeah, all right. I know, but it was just something stupid that I thought of. Where it's like, the ship is propelling itself, so you levitate the enemy up to a specific point, and the ship just keeps going. Levitate yeah. them to the side and then drop it. Splash. Yeah, actually, you know what? Let me. I don't really care if you can see everything, so I'm just going to go into the dynamic lighting and get rid of all the dynamic lighting. Uh, oh. So that's the uh, lower level over there? Yeah, it was the lower level. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of the dynamic lighting because it's like it doesn't really hurt me if you see it. Like the cargo deck is technically the very bottom. That's where the engineering would be. So that's why there's gnomes down there. And the map itself doesn't line up perfectly with the uh, grid marks for the lower deck or the cargo deck. It's surprisingly annoying to make that work. It actually, no, I got it perfectly for the main deck, but the other ones weren't lined up with the main deck. Oh, uh, yeah, you'd have to actually use Photoshop and cut it. Yeah, I'd actually have to cut and paste to get it to line up properly, and I'm just like, you know, I don't care that much because the only place where it's going to matter will be on the main deck. And the one that's oh, I've most, been needed this whole time. So and the one that's most out of line is the cargo deck, and I honestly don't expect anyone to be on the cargo deck. Well, it's going to immediately go there. No. Uh, <laughs> All right, so so much just waiting on Risu. Yeah, so much Risu for now. Oh. Okay. Bop, 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 bop. But yeah, this this is gonna be a, a fun a fun thing. And if you've come to the conclusion that there's probably gonna be a fight on the boat, you're probably right. <laughs> it's no. not like you said that before the session even started. But I mean, I mean, who would ever expect a fight on the boat when I have everything planned out for it? <clears throat> Look at all the That's dwarves. Look I at all the, the tokens. The GM totally placed all these here just because he wanted to give the ship flavor and not because it's a fight. Yeah, when I haven't already complained about, I'm not going to do this for flavor because it's just too many freaking things. You did that once for flavor, and that just annoyed me. I did crap it once for flavor, <laughs> and it was nice, but it was so many tokens. Uh, too that, many well, tokens. Now you want too that, many well, tokens. just be thankful that's that I do. That, that's why, like, all the dwarf soldiers are the same thing. The dwarf clerics, the same thing. The dragonborn veterans, same thing. The gnome people, same thing. The general, he gets his own. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you for that, but that's yeah. why. I, but I like doing all the maps, and that's why it takes a while for me to do my maps. But, yeah. The but... general, by the way, so I can kind of give you some descriptions while you're here. He is wearing plate mail, first of all. And this plate mail, from your first glance, it does not look to be made of normal metal. Adamantine plate mail. You could make that assumption. He also has a heavy cloak with him, and his only weapon is a huge maul. Is it bigger than Lily's? It's actually bigger than Lily's. Mm -hmm. When he says huge, he means its size category is huge. <laughs> no, I don't mean it's that big, but no, this is a big maul, and there's like inert runes um, in lined along the uh, helm of the uh where am I for? the helm of the mall. And he's also got his little helmet on. You could probably see a little token of him. Yeah, right. And he's got his magnificent beard. Would we assume the that the Baron would be close enough to the general for Lily to say hi? I'm gonna assume that they would not actually allow you up here to where the control area is. Because that's a that's a closed off room. It's not. Uh, it's not actually a closed off room. It's just on a raised pedestal with like fences and everything. But they would uh, you can assume they wouldn't actually let you in there. So I guess whenever he decides to come down and mingle, if he does. Yeah. Um. For other things to explain, this room four here, which is technically the lower area above, like where Azul is, that would be his private chambers. He gets the best bet out of a lot of them, but that's to be expected. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. This is 80 and single and ready to mingle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only weapons you see on the deck of the ship, by the way, are the three ballista towards the back. And there's a number of people down there ready to operate them. Only three? There's probably there's more on the lower decks for sure. How much damage does no. ballista do? I'm thinking like 2d10 at least. Cool. 2d10? Plus your intelligence modifier, because you have to be really dumb to use it. I think it's like either two d ten. I could pop. Huh? I think you just muted yourself. I, yeah, I, I muted myself. I muted myself. <laughs> okay. I say like two d twelve. No, no, it's obviously two d twenty. That it's two d twenty. Who am I kidding? 
Oh, jeez. <laughs> they're ballistas. They shoot giant, like, they, they were originally made to shoot tree trunks. Yeah, yeah I, like the, I like the idea of either very little or a ton of damage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the so, yeah they only do, like, 2d6 bits of damage. <laughs> no, these things probably, they do at least 2d10. I might have them do 2d12. 2d20 is a bit much. Ah, <laughs> uh, 3d20. <laughs> Yeah, obviously. Shoot the dwarf in general with one and just one shot him. Yeah, and then like, downstairs you have like a little sitting area. You can assume there's a lot of alcohol down there being served. Do like a, um, a 40 10 with a minus 5 to hit. <laughs> <laughs> so, gotta wait for Reese to get back still, but I think we can kind of get into things soonish enough ish. So, when do you release the Kraken? <laughs> oh, please, a Kraken would murder this party. We're most of the ship. Yeah. A mini Kraken. <laughs> the mini Kraken. not giving the mini Kraken as a pet. Got the, the, the mini Ren. <laughs> no, you, this, this is going to be a fun thing. You understand why. Um, but yeah, you're all welcomed onto the ship initially. The general goes up. He climbs up onto the second la um, layer where the main steering wheel is. And you see that there is a gnome who is kind of standing on top of the wheel with his arms crossed and a dragonborn behind him who... He kind of looks like he has an amused expression on his face as he's, like, there to help the gnome operate the wheel. And the general's just overlooking them and make sure everything's ready to head out. And besides that, you'll be told that you can go down below decks. There's two methods down there. There's the circular staircase in front of you and the two lighters to the uh, rear here. Both of which will take you down. The circular staircase, obviously enough here. And the two lighters are... Where are the two lighters take you down to? Either. Under. They take you down here and here. Yeah, that would be where they take you down. Because oh. down here is where you go down even further, and those are actually locked. Oh, yeah, so these, down these are pound. further. And the down circular the ladder up. also would go down there, but it is also kind of there's a doorway blocking it off to go to the cargo deck. Uh -huh. Which uh, quarters are ours? The quarters you're going to have are actually going to be 8J, 8G. H and HI. So the four at the bottom were what I intended for you when you were going to have everyone there, because that was eight seats and I, you only have to take eight people total. Okay. But since you're only having seven, that means somebody gets their own room. Well, he's going to stay with the Baron. Wow, chicka, wow, wow. <laughs> unless, he, is going... unless he demands so... his own room. He's not going to demand his own room. You get the feeling that he's been on a ship before. He kind of understands how cramped it is. Because she's going to say this is a lot more open than any normal ship. Yeah. And because she mentioned that a lot of mentioned that uh, Azuli was her pet, she's going to have to stay in a room with Azuli. Yeah. That's a little worse. <laughs> hey, Azuli's a girl. Okay, sure. Hey, hey, Azuli has standards. You probably fit all of them though. So. Wasps. Oh God! Not thinking Undertale. I mean, I was thinking standards being he waits till they're at least of age. It's like, I can cook spaghetti. Oh no, you're meeting all of my standards. <laughs> uh, Alright, uh, I'm just going to assume Reese is back now, or not back, and I'm just going to keep going. But yeah, those four rooms down there, you can figure out who has their own room by themselves. It could be Mara, it could be Falan. I can give Falana her own room. No, Falana needs to be watched. <laughs> <laughs> Mara will keep an eye on Falana. Yeah, Falana needs to be watched. I, like, I started saying that, I was like, wait, no. So, yeah, Serena... Maybe not. Serena Serena's going to escort Falana around. She's not going to leave the, the elf alone on a ship of dwarves. Okay, so well, you want to watch Falana? Mara will take yeah, her own Serena's room Yeah, Serena's going to watch, watch. Yeah, Mara can take her own room then. Um, yeah, and things will go on, everything's... And the ship will leave on the first day. You're kind of allowed to be on the deck for the most part as everyone mills about. It, unlike most sailing ships, there's not actually like, a lot of the activities needed on the top, which makes sense. You don't have sails. You don't have the oars to row. And you don't actually know how the ship is moving, but you can see it is moving at a decent clip. It's not going extremely fast. And it's probably midday when Ashenport is but a, like a speck on the horizon as you follow the coast north in a way. Kind of weird meta question, but how fast is it, like, square-wise? Like, what do you mean square-wise? Like, do, do you want to just know how... the speed the thing moves? Yeah, like the speed that it would move. All right, I actually was looking at this earlier to try to get a 
figure. Was this in this book? It wasn't this book. Yeah, I remember it was in this book. Because I had it figured out, and then I've already forgotten. He's he's asking. So when he picks someone up with levitate, how many squares will they fall behind us per round? Uh, they basically. Will... Mm, let me look at how fast I'm thinking it's going to move. Okay, so a normal warship is two and a half miles per hour. I'm going to figure this would only move two miles an hour. So that's less than 30 feet per round, so they probably would be able to ke catch up. That's also okay. depending on current, because a propeller... Yeah, a true. Jet. Yeah, true. So I'm going to say it can go anywhere between, like, two to, like, three. So I'm just going to see the average of two and a half, which is what it says for a warship. It's about three squares per round. Mm. Is that really that, that slow? I don't actually know the speed, but that would probably make sense. Let me, uh, math. And this is where we find out that Alana actually gets seasick. <laughs> I mean, she probably would, considering she's never been on a ship before and can't swim. Uh, yeah, she'd probably be spending most of her time hanging off. <laughs> her I think head. actually go faster. Yeah, I haven't decided yet, but So whatever. two and a half miles per hour would be 15 feet per round, so three squares per round. All right, I might say it actually goes three, and then it goes like three miles an hour, so it's going four. Okay. So it's a little faster for a warship, but I know I said it was slow. Whatever, I'm ignoring myself. <laughs> you could also make it slower and make it towards two per. I know, I know. Anyway... So the warship, it's not too long until Ashenport is but a speck on the horizon, and as you crest the final northern, like the northernmost um, pinnacle of the uh, peninsula there, you start heading east towards where Redwall would be. And for the most part, not much is going to happen for the first few days. Where are our quarters? Your quarters, if you were here, you would have noticed, but your quarters are down on the, the uh, lower deck. You have the lower four rooms. Somebody's getting their own room. We agreed that it wasn't Falana. G H I and J. Up yours? Falana's staying with Serena because we don't <laughs> trust her on a boat of dwarves. Up yours? Do you I'm blame sorry. us? Too bad. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Oh, There's uh, time for Serena will be asleep and Falana will not. Lily had promised the, the dwarf that. He would come with us, the one that we rescued. All right. Um, I'm gonna yeah, say it wouldn't be too okay. hard to convince him to join us, or to convince the. Actually, roll a few persuasion checks. There's no need. His home. His is home is Redwall. Red hey, we have a way to. Be You're not convincing him. Oh. Right. You're convincing. You're convincing the general. people to let him on the ship. Yeah. I'm gonna say with those rolls, Lily will have not the hardest time convincing the general to allow the dwarf to join. Um, I will speak to the dwarf himself and explain explicit, explicitly that if you are to join, that you are to be under my command and that you will listen to whatever I say until we get there. And the dwarf will... He kind of seems a little nervous at this, but he will agree. I think he said his name was Adric. Sounds if right. If I may, yeah. Yeah, he said his name was Adric. And he'll, he'll kind of agree to that and go with that. So we can assume now that he is one of the several dwarves on the ship. Isn't that rather harsh, considering he's a refugee from Gatesville? Honestly, that's rather rude. Falana's is not here. <laughs> if she is, Lily is is just going to say. You aren't, very, why, our apologies. We'll we'll make sure everything's if, fine. If you're attempting to eke out every kind of advantage that you can over this situation, which is pretty much entirely peaceful. They're going to view you with incredible suspicion. No, yeah. I'm trying to gauge how the general reacts to an opinion <laughs> like that. And he'll kind of just raise his eyebrow at Falana if he hears her make this comment. This is my ship. I'm allowing you to ride on it because I am being kind and my orders were to bring the Baron along with us. And I am entitling him to any bodyguard or honor guard he may see fit. But if you're going to cause issues, well... Don't. Interesting. Why did I not <laughs> take silence? Lily's going to tell the general, if you have any problems with her, let me know and I will personally guard her in your brig. 
And he'll kind of not. He doesn't actually chuckle or anything, but he'll just simply nod at that. Just ensure that there are no troubles. Falana, and there are no troubles. Lily, uh, there are no troubles. Well, All right. Okay. So are you going to have anything happen in the first day or two? Um, Alana's probably going to throw up a couple times over the <laughs> side of the railing. <laughs> That's actually perfectly fine. All right. So Probably getting... using invisibility when Serena's asleep just to you know, get a feel for the ship, possibly like see if the cannons were armed or something. Lily would have... The best that you can tell, there is not actually that much in the way of armament on the ship outside of the three ballista on the back. And they were pretty much ready to go, of course. <laughs> Lily would uh, charge Mara with keeping an eye on Falana and keeping Falana out of trouble as much as possible. Um, and if uh, General comes down from his perch up there, she would like to chat with him a little bit if he allows it. You're going to have time to speak to him yeah, on the first date or so, okay. so what would you want to say to him? Uh, she just wants to get a little extra information. Uh, you know, she's kind of wants to get on his good side a little bit and uh, see what, what his opinion of this mission is um, and the, the area and so on. So she's she's not trying to uh, let's see the best way to put it. She's not trying to pry or anything. She's just trying to make small talk. Roll a persuasion. I love Damn, her charisma. Her, yeah, her charisma is <laughs> insane. Alright, she'll be able to get a few things out of him. He'll explain that like, his mission, like, explain that the area itself is uh, he's not too fond of it from all the beasts and everything else in the area. He doesn't like being this far away from home either and that's probably the biggest complaint you're, you would see from him. Um, she would then ask what his opinion of Haven is and mention that she's from Haven. It kind of raises his eyebrows at that, but kind of nod. Mm, from Haven, are you? Haven ain't that bad of a place, but they don't know what it's like to be on the edge of danger. Well, he's going to nod at that. Yeah, I've been finding that out for the last couple of weeks, months. <laughs> um, let's see, what else was there? She's going to say, uh, she's going to ask him if he knows of any dangers in the area that they should look out for. Depends on where you look. In the sky there are birds and other creatures. Very little from the land probably has the reach to get to us. I'm sure there are a few ships that might try to give us trouble and God knows what beasts lurk below the waves. And she's <clears throat> also going to ask if, if uh, he wouldn't mind uh, giving them an escorted tour of of the ship. Roll another persuasion. Ah. Please, a No. <laughs> nah. He'll shake his head. No. Nah. Might be able to get one of my lieutenants to take care of that, but I won't do it personally. <laughs> well, that'll work. Right, but I can't do it personally, rather. But yeah, so you'll have one of his dragonborn lieutenants, which will give you a tour around the ship. Okay. I do want to scout out the uh, find basically where engineering is actively. What's driving the engines? I want you to already out. know more or less <sighs> that engineering is on the very bottom. It's where the technically the cargo deck is, and all entrances there are sealed. Would the and they're tour, not letting it out. Would the tour give us any information? Uh, you know, let us peek in or anything like that? No, the tour will kind of make no like. Like we'll make note that this is like the two ladders and the staircase will go further down into that, but they'll make the comment that like that's the no the gnome's domain. We don't go down there. Could then Lily ask if uh, if a gnome would take her down? And he'll the dragonborn will kind of chuckle and will shake his head. No, the do the gnomes don't let anyone down there outside of themselves. Um, the other thing I'm gonna yeah the other thing I'm gonna say right now is that the dragonborn are all gold dragonborn, I believe. And then Falana had something she was trying to do. I'm willing to talk to one of the gnomes down the cargo deck. You can't get you down can't there. Get to the cargo deck. The cargo deck itself. The or cargo deck yeah. itself is sealed. You cannot get down there from either of the three ex entrance points. What? Yeah. The only thing I could do is 
Give me a little bit. I they have to eat that. sometime. Are they going to come up? Can she try to find a, a gnome when he comes up and talk There's to him? There's an off chance they're eating. She down. may, and she can speak to the gnome when he comes up. What would she say to him? Uh, Falana? No, oh, I thought Lily was doing okay, it. Okay, well, if Lily's going to do I that, know she's, she's going to talk to the, the gnome when he comes up and say, Hey, I heard you guys had some really cool, uh, awesome things that you have made down there. Um, I made a couple interesting things, too. I was wondering if I could take a look, if you wouldn't mind. Roll persuasion? With massive disadvantage. <laughs> Oh, yes. No, yeah. so no. I don't even need disadvantage with that. Uh, but I'll give it to you for any, anyway. And the gnome will kind of look at Lily. He'll look her up and down. And he'll just kind of start laughing. <laughs> you think you've made anything like the source of this? Trust me, miss. You've seen nothing like what we made down here. Ben, oh, if I'm you don't sure. mind, I'm a, if you don't mind, I'm a researcher myself. And I personally do take interest in And he'll, he'll raise up his hand and he'll stop you when you say researcher. All the more reason not to let you down there. I don't plan to dismantle anything. I just want to look at it. All the more reason not to let you down there. Lily's going to say, Alright, how about this? I'm not the smartest person out there. There's no way I'd be able to tell anyone else what's going on down there. I'm just really curious, because, like, there's no sail, there's no oars. How could such a marvel like this be made? <laughs> and he'll kind of laugh at that. <laughs> That's the trick of it. But no, we aren't letting you down there. Hmm. What if Lily uh, gave him the cheater's deck in exchange? Ain't letting you down there. Aw. Well, have a good meal. <laughs> and he'll get to do eating. Why do I have a feeling I want to start fucking gnomes overboard? <laughs> Why do I have the feeling that I'm going to be throwing an elf overboard before the session is done? <laughs> if if <laughs> I were a little less good, I would consider tossing the last fear mushroom into whatever that gnome is eating. <laughs> <laughs> that is a terrible idea, especially since it's big enough to be wow. an explosive. Uh, Actually, no. It's a good prank. Gnomes would appreciate it. Don't do it. I'm not going to, but if I was a little less good, I'd consider it. <laughs> Even then, being friendly to a gnome, boy, a prank like that is being friendly. <laughs> the dwarves might not appreciate it, though. <laughs> The general probably wouldn't appreciate it. The general he's really probably wouldn't appreciate it. You get the feeling he's a little uptight. Uh, is there a forge on this boat? No. What kind of dwarven vehicle does not have a goddamn forge? It was worth a you'd ask. A it's really gnomish versus dwarvish to begin with those damn gnomes. And to be honest, having a forge on a vessel is... This would probably be one of the few vessels they could fit it in, and it'd probably be a complaint of the dwarves, but no, there is no forge on it. As long as they have an alcohol supply, I'm pretty sure. Oh, they have, they have an alcohol supply, believe me. So there's no... And you, ex you expect dwarves to not have booze. <laughs> Alright. There's no they, amount of... Uh, mention that. We even mentioned that we brought on ba barrels of ale during the loading sequence. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to a bartender. He might be a dwarf. I don't care. It's a dwarf. Give me a wine glass. <laughs> want a wine glass? <laughs> oh, no. Sorry. It's an elf in a dwarf town for sure. Uh, oh, quick question, Silver. Cargo yeah. deck. Serena was loading yeah. cargo. Which it's not gone? actually the cargo deck, no. It's not. It's, just, it's not. Yeah. yeah, it's actually the engineering. I just didn't feel like going to rename it. Right. Good job. Um, yeah. Again, worth a shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know. We're trying to find out more. Um, uh, as. A lot of too busy being sick. Yeah, I, I expect the dwarf when Falana like, goes to like, try to get, like, holds out a wine glass, like, asks for a wine glass. What'd she do exactly? First, she's going to make sure you know it's not. Laced of anything. 
But was she trying to get a wine glass from the dwarf, or did she put one out to be filled? No, she asked for one. Then he's just going to set out... He's going to look at her, and then he's going to set out a huge pint of beer. <laughs> Let's see if you can hold your weight, elf girl. This is your proving grounds. <laughs> I don't want Ironically, that. I think Alana can technically <laughs> hold it better. I I don't want that weak shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we should have held one of those bottles of wine back. <laughs> nope, she has them. I thought we sold one. We sold we sold at least yeah, one. Yeah, we sold we sold at least two to Garrett, I think. I believe Alana said she was keeping one. Okay, so she, she has kept one. I think he sold two of them. Yeah. Um Ah, oh, that weak shit. Pull up a bottle of wine. <laughs> All right. So, um, a couple of a couple of things that Lily would do during the next couple of days. I assume that we have a couple. Well, days. for now, I'm gonna go towards the end of the first night. So, okay. where would people be for like start of the first night? The Trying bar, to sleep. Basic my drink. He will be down here in his room. Lily would be with him. Because reasons. Zul will be with Alana wherever they're going to be. Mara will be down in her room, I think. Mara actually will be looking around, I think, on the deck. Serena's probably going to be standing on the bow to help keep watch. So yeah. I, thought, I thought Serena was charged with keeping an eye on Alana. She's only there to make sure make sure that that the elf gets back okay and doesn't get and get beaten up by dwarves. Yeah. And Azul will be down here with Alana as Mara's going off this earth. I'm moving Alana to her room. Okay. Mara was, will be down there as well. Mara was charged with keeping an eye on Falana during the day, um, and Serena's probably going to keep an eye on her at night. Yeah. But yeah, as the night pulls on, the sun sets, everything of the sort goes on. Serena, Alana, roll a... Alana can roll a charisma check, Serena can roll wisdom. Cool. Just uh, a regular check? Yeah, just a regular check. So an unskilled one, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, jeez. Man, I was giving you advantage on that and everything. <laughs> I had a five and a ten. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Serena especially will notice that there feels there seems to be something off in the wind. The sky's right. above the ship right now. The sun is set. There's a full moon out tonight, conveniently enough. I'm going to change the lighting. Although, to be fair, Alana would probably be a disadvantage for being seasick. Yeah. Probably, yeah. I'm going to change the lighting. 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 Oh, Jesus. Serena can't see. Uh, Serena, sh Serena yeah, let me, let me find it. Serena. I'll put light on her thing. I expect you would have had it up. Uh, yeah. Actually, let me... That's why I had the dynamic, light, dynamic lighting up. Let me... I'm smirched. Well, I was probably in a bar. In the bar. So right about there. That was the door. Right about here. Right. I'm smirched. <laughs> okay. So, first of all, let me get to the miracle. Is that one layer? Is that on? Nope, that's not on that layer. <laughs> there, it's, that's the layer it's on. Why are you on that layer? <laughs> So first of all, that'll be over there. Can't anything be seen up top that I do this right? I didn't do this fully right. I can't see anything up top. I know. I fucked up. Let me finish. Fuck, let me finish on fucking up. Good job. Let me finish on fucking up. I was so prepared for this, guys. You have no idea. <laughs> the thing is, you were prepared, and then you weren't prepared. Yeah. Where is Serena again? Very top, top north. Area. Top. The top of the All ship. Right, so she has. I'm gonna assume she has light on, which is this. Players can see light. There. I'm gonna assume a few of the dwarves have torches up. Actually, I'm just gonna copy more of these. To be honest. Assume these are torches. Yeah. The ship's on fire. Oh no. Hey, just assume these are torches. No, the ship's on fire. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Whoop. 
Whoops. Oh, no. oh. What did I do? You moved the map over to the side. Yep. Yeah, I know that. I'm trying to hit. Oh, I know what I did. Uh, the fires at the bottom of the top deck are all, are off. Probably from the. Yeah, okay, we're good. Yeah, I know. I know. Whoop! Damn it. Okay. I see what I did wrong, by the way. Outside okay. of being in the wrong layer entirely. No, I accident. No, I wanted to be on the lighting on the layer, layer on the map layer. I just accidentally selected the ship. All right, now the lighting should be better, I think. Yep. All right. So, as the night goes on, Serena, you get the feeling that there's something off on the wind. You're not really sure what it is. All right. Serena's going to go to the dwarf behind her and say, "There's something wrong. There's something wrong. Something something bad is coming. If I, if I'm right, go tell the dwarf the general." And the dwarf will kind of he'll nod, and then he'll run off to tell the general. And Serena, can Serena make a perception check to try and get a, a yeah, she uh, may. Handle? She okay. may. All right. And with that perception check, you notice a few things. First of all, in the distance, you notice a lot of floating lights. And more importantly, as you follow your gaze along that, you see look behind the ship, and you see storm clouds, huge storm clouds, and they seem to be approaching very rapidly. And at the front, there's a lot of lightning activity. Oh, Jesus. Uh, can, Ser can Serena make a religion check, or would it be an arcana check to see if those storm clouds are magical? You can make an arcana check with that. Okay. Ah, damn. You don't actually know, like, the clouds are advancing far too quickly to seem natural, but you're not really sure much more beyond that. Okay. It's like even like the storm that hit when you were Northbridge, or not Northbridge, Ashtonport, it did not move this quickly. Alright, this is really bad then. Serena's gonna go and try and get to the general. Alright, and as you start to go down, you hear a loud ringing across the ship as a dwarf starts ringing a large bell to try to wake everyone up. And you hear the dwarf general calling out to everyone, All hands to station! Something's coming! Serena, can Serena get, get onto the main area first? She'll be able to get onto the main area first, yes. Would, All right, uh, Serena's... Go ahead. Uh, you can go first, Jeep. Since All right, I was going to say, what would the Baron react? Or how would he react? Um... At the sound of the like alarm going off, the Baron would have stood up, he would have grabbed his weapon, and he would have started heading above deck. Lily would follow him. Alright. So Serena's gonna meet up meet up with the general and say, We've got a we've got a large bank of lights floating on the water in front of in front of us, and we've got a got a completely unnaturally fast storm cloud hi hiding up behind us. Something's going to hit us hard and bad. Alright. Um further note. You all have ability to move through the little gap now, so if you want to move to above deck, I'll let you move to above deck. Okay. Uh, what little gap? I can't see a little gap. I'm blind. I might go up there. Above them. Well, actually, I'm sure we'd take more of it. Yeah. Um, Alright, so once Lily gets up there, uh, would, would the door uh, general let her get up to the deck? Where Serena is? I don't expect they'd actually be able to get up there, per se, but you'll be at least on the top deck and you'll be able to look around. And at this point, it's very apparent as you see the lights getting closer and closer, and I'm going to say a number of the dwarves moved up to the top deck by now. She's going to call out to either a lieutenant or someone um, that uh, this is something that they've seen, possibly that they've seen before, that there are people who can control weather. Yeah. Everyone, by the way, roll initiative. Lovely. There is something I do want to try, though, since this is a storm cloud coming. Oh, god dang it. <sighs> Baron, natural 20. <laughs> yeah, I gotta roll for him. Let me get on the right layer. Gotta roll initiative. Roll initiative. Roll initiative. What do you get, by the way? 18. Not that bad. Not that bad. I, and I'm going to put General Oscar. <laughs> How? <laughs> that was the wrong thing I rolled. So that was my mistake. I'm like, wait, what? That's He's, he's not Leo. 
<laughs> it's got a minus hey. five. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, no, that was with zero <laughs> stats because he doesn't have any. Um, I have made him. I made him an NPC, not in a player. Yep. So he's actually got an eight. Why is Solana in a yellow box on my screen? Because you might have her be highlighted on the turn order. If you hold your mouse over the per, over a person on the turn oh. order, then it sh then it highlights. And I'm just I did not have all the dwarves move with Oscar. I did not know that was a thing. I was really confused. I thought she had literally wrote in a box and <laughs> around her for some reason. All right. It's it's also it's useful if the G GM doesn't want to put names on everything, since you can just hover over each individual token if they've got individual initiatives. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just eh. All right. You know, like oh. the fox that has no name. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And as things go on, the lightning orbs around you all seem to rush in. Or the light, yeah, the orbs in the distance seem to rush forward. And you see at this point, they are just orbs of crackling electricity. I was more saying it seems they'd fallen out of their little holes. Yeah. Let me... Can I put you on the proper layer? You are now. You can see one down here all the way in the bottom. It's not actually there. Actually, I'm going to move it over here. There. All right, so... Several of the orbs suddenly start to approach the ship, and as they do so, they're going to start attacking. So they come in from both sides, and you see as they get close to the dwarves, streams of electricity seem to arc from their bodies. And that mark. Streams of electricity seem to arc from their bodies and attack everyone there. Would a lot of know what these are? You can roll Arcana to try and identify them. Can I nature? Nature as well. Yeah. Arcana would be better though, so. Ooh, Taser Elementals. Oh my god. <laughs> Taser <laughs> Elementals, the police's best friends. <laughs> so, Alana, you. I'm actually going to um, give you advantage with this because it's storm related. Uh, so rejoice. You're being way too nice to me. I am being way too nice to you, I know. Um, but you recognize these things are some kind of storm elemental. I'm only going to give you half advantage, so you're probably going to get like a 10 result from a 10. So these are some kind of storm elemental, as obviously enough. It is a like condensed ball of electricity, and you don't know much more beyond that. And Lily, you don't know much more beyond that either. Basically, um, you were giving me the information I would know from just like my passive knowledge. Pretty much. Um, and as they come up, you see arcs of electricity soaring from all four of them that come up initially, and they try to attack everyone there. And as they do so... Uh, more up here, and these two are, are these four are going to approach on the top from both sides, and they all glow with a light as well. All right, so Azul's first turn. Azul is going to run up here, and I don't have Azul's page open. I need to have Azul's page open. Bite the lightning, ride it. <laughs> going to flaming bite the lightning. I need Azul. I need Mara. I need Baron. Baron. Yep, so Azul first. I'm glad they came close enough so Serena can actually stab them. <laughs> yeah. Azul first. Azul will go up and Azul will bite the crap out of this first one. And that should hit, I do believe. I'm just no, that misses. I'm just wondering, with uh, with them approaching us, would people with ranged abilities be able to hit them in the first round? Um, I'm gonna say yeah. So if you wanted to take like paw shots at them ahead of like out of order, go ahead. I'm gonna finish taking care of Azul first. So Azul okay. also would have used Fangs of the Fox, whatever is on it, or Fangs, Fangs of the, of the Fire, Fire Snake. Snake. Yeah. And as the fire streaks out from Azul with that crit hat on that last one, dealing seven damage, but you get the feeling it actually wasn't that effective. No way. Uh, lightning. Where are we on? And it has a bonus attack. And that will hit for another three damage. <sighs> yeah, and then you have your ranged um, attacks ahead of time if you want to try to take them. Okay. So that would be like anyone with a range attack might be able to take it. A bow yeah, something. Serena's going to just use a scan trip to do it. She's not going to bother doing anything else. Alana's first turn would basically be getting on her broom just so she doesn't have to sit on the rocking ship. Yeah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> the dwarf soldiers. Yeah, that's actually fine. You'll be able to keep up with it easily enough. 
Yeah. It's a witch. Um, Burn I assume witch. Mara probably would fire her. Yeah, Mara would have as well. So let me open up Mara here. Weapons. Mara would have attacked one. She would have hit. This one coming up close. I love having two attacks. Yeah. And I would have said that would have been a sneak attack as well for Mara. <coughs> Serena's never giving, getting two attacks. She's too slow. Does she auto crit? Because, no, it's not a surprise. Never mind. Yeah, it's not a surprise around. It hasn't acted yet, so she would have had advantage. So yeah, because she had advantage, she got sneak attack. Yeah, that's where, that's where my, my thought process was there, but like, wait, I'm missing something. <laughs> and that will be enough to just barely not kill this first elemental as her crossbow bolt streaks into it. Um, Lily was attacking... Which one was Lily attacking? The first one's going to be to protect Mara, and then the All next right. one's going to be to the north to protect Azul. So the first one that goes in to protect Mara will strike into the uh, elemental, and it'll fall destroyed. The one that goes into Azul actually misses. All right. Some high AC. Well, these things have decks out the ass. Yeah. And beyond that, the dwarves will also attack, and I'm not going to roll all the dwarves because that is stupid. I do have one action I would do, basically, as the. Well, yeah. Figure it out while I'm finding this. The one on Azul. Here it is. On Azul? Yeah. You're going to hit the fox. The one attacking Azul, I think. Um. (laughs) <laughs> that will hit dealing 7, 12... Of course, damage, so... It's... Yeah, 12 damage, but the orb appears to be alive, though not that well. Now then, the dwarves will attack, and... Funny thing, you see nearly every dwarf here turn and attack... Oh, let's say this orb right down here. So there is a stream of crossbow bolts soaring out at (laughs) this one thing. And only about three strike home. I mean, strength in numbers, not numbers in strength. You also know that these things have an extremely high AC. I'm not rolling for all of them because that would take way too long. 15. And the other thing is, is as all these crossbow bolts hit this one, you feel like each one isn't even isn't even doing that much damage either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And did anyone else have an attack? Baron didn't. So it's Alana's turn now. Alright. The general doesn't have a ranged ability? Oh, he does actually. Let me roll. Alana a will... Yeah, let me roll a save for these things. I think... Hey, Oscar, so, what is the save on that? Did I write that down? Here. I did not actually write that down. Son of a bitch. And she was right. Here. Actually, I don't think he has a ranged ability, to be honest, now that I think about it more. <laughs> yeah. The clericals do, though. Clericals... How many clericals are there and in range? I got a clerical... Uh, most of the clerics are downstairs. The clerics gotta come up. Then the clerics come start coming up next round. So that clerical will attack, and that's what kind of save is that? That's a deck save. <laughs> wow! No, it passed the save. It almost failed. That's very impressive. I'll be honest. All right. Um. Yeah. So Alana, what was Alana doing? Uh, I made a box where it's being cast. And what are you casting? Yeah, and okay. If I see the box now, it kind of blended in a little bit at first. It did. I didn't yeah, I, I see it, it now. Forever. Okay, so again, the deck save, double deck save. Doop, doop. Hints: Don't use deck saves. The first one passes rather easily. The second one fails somewhat impressively. Mm. Uh, so the first one will take. Uh, okay. So the first one takes that, and the second one takes this. And you get the feeling as the cold strikes them that it's not that effective. No. I mean, it was worth a shot. 
I'll, I'll be honest, Rick, right up front. These things are very durable, despite the fact they don't have the most health. Yeah. They're just resistant to everything except for maybe force and radiant. In fact, they might even be resistant to radiant. You have to actually resistant to some product. All right. Um, is that it for Alana's turn? Yep. All right, Alana. I'm going to move right here and use Mage Armor on Cell. Okay. Which I already have it added in, so I forgot to declick it. Down here, out of sight. I don't know if you can actually. I, I don't know if you can actually see that or not, so I don't want to take it off the GM layer yet. I can't see anything on this half of your boundary. If that I, I don't mean on that side of the map. It's actually south of the ship. Right. But I'm not worried about it yet. Um, that it for Alana's turn. That's all I can do. All right, so Mara is going to take aim at uh, this one down here. Actually, they would have had an advantage on most of those rolls because what the dwarves are, I just mailed the dwarves out of thugs. So Mara then will attack again with her heavy crossbow, and she will hit spectacularly. And she is I should does she have sneak if it's adjacent to a dwarf? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did actually put sneak on. Yeah, because I'm saying the dwarves are going to be allies. Okay. Yeah. So that'll hit spectacularly, and that'll do enough damage to kill this. Uh, and that's pretty much all she's going to do. And the Baron will rush up at the closest one he can see on his turn, and he will whack it with his thing. Uh, Ashfield. His weapon... He will whack it. <clears throat> and his second whack. Much better. <laughs> and that'll kill it. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he rolled a, a 10 on a natural one. Uh. <laughs> Next up is Lily's turn. Merton is very rusty. <clears throat> All right, she's going to take out her greatsword. Yep. Actually, can she even make it there? Not there. Um, can she make it anywhere else? She's not going to take out her greatsword. She's going to keep her longbow out, if you're long allowing that. Um, oh, and oh. she's going to attack this guy here. And uh, the second one she's going to use a precision strike on. Okay. And that's going to hit no matter what you roll then? Uh, the first one she's going to use trip attack on. Do you want to do that, Jeebs? I get extra damage on it. Yeah, I know that, but... The order of operations, I can't allow you to trip attack for the first one. Why because not? you already know you would have hit even if it went prone. Oh... Uh, uh. Okay, so Lily's using a trip attack and a longbow. So yeah, you're what, able to do that. Cool. what I was going to do was uh, actually, trip attack, and then I can allow you to do that actually because the first attack will hit no matter what. So the trip attack it would do an extra three or an extra seven, seven. so that'd be fourteen damage. The second one will hit for eight damage, so that's fourteen plus eight is twenty. Two, I believe. I know I get disadvantage if it is prone, but... Uh, yeah, it's 22. Like However, it's immune to prone. It doesn't go prone. Yeah, uh, that's what I figured. Um, but uh, I was just doing it for the extra damage. Yeah, just... I'm not going to really allow you to do it out of order like that again. You just get it this time because it doesn't matter. Yeah, The yeah. reason why I tried to go with precision first was so that you wouldn't say it misses. So I was trying to catch that first. That's why I did it out of order. Yeah, yeah like, there's a few things. Yeah, but you, it's again the make sure things are taken care of correctly. Right. Next up is the Ball of Lightning's turn. And as everyone roll perception check as well right now. I'm great at those guys. Got it. Well, apparently, Lily's amazing at it. Hey. Perception is my forte. You beat everybody else, though. Oh, I was actually being very sarcastic. I wasn't even paying attention to the rolls. Uh. Although your disadvantage roll was a literal zero, so... Yeah. 
Nice. Uh, Who was joke. the highest roller so far? Falana was amazing. Oh, Oscar, Falana I should put Oscar. Falana was the best. She had disadvantage. Yeah. <laughs> Why did she? She, and she doesn't advantage. actually have disadvantage, but we're just making a joke about that. So the highest roll is going to be Alana and Falana, it looks like. And as all this is going on, you see in the distance above the, um, like where the cloud is coming behind the ship, you see a large ship, uh, a large force or um, shape approaching the ship. What does it look like? It looks like a bird with electricity crackling from the tips of its feathers. Thunderbird? Zapdos, is that Thunderbird. you? Thunderbird. Dirty deeds. Well, that explains where the where the bloody yeah. lightning came I'm from. I'm going to make it smaller. You're going to make it smaller, okay. No, you'll understand why when you see it when I say that. Thunder shark. Oh, God, it's an electric rock. Oh, no, geez. Zapdos. And it's flying over everyone at this point. And as it does so, I'm going to say that Falana, the Baron, that Dragonborn will all have to make a deck save. Okay. Falana? Yeah, Falana. Is there anyone behind them? Okay. Let's see. Okay. It's, uh, okay. It's okay. You mean I'm the fine. general, not the Baron? Yeah, I meant the general, not the Baron. Right. That, was, that was my mistake, so... Oh, so Serena needs to make a deck save too, huh? No. Holy crap! One, no. two, three. Oh. Six. This is a six by six creature. Oh, I made it huge! Believe me, I made it huge. It's gargantuan. Yeah. So deck save on him, and I said there was a dragonborn. Yep. Yep. Dragonborns were this one, I believe. Deck save. Puppy. All right, so the Dragonborn crit is save. The okay. Baron made his, or not the Baron, the General made his. Falana failed hers. Falana's oh, bad. Shit. Yeah, Falana took 39 lightning damage. Jesus Christ. And nobody's going to help with that, so. Yeah, S Serena's going to. You jerk, you're assuming your healer won't heal. The healer. Serena's. Yeah. Actually, she is fairly close. The General is going to take 20. The Dragonborn is going to take 20. Both of them are just kind of reeling back as this thing flies by, and I'm going to say anyone who is, like, right next to it also would have had the chance to attack it as it went by. So I'm going to say, like... Weapon. Actually, yeah, nobody would have... Where did Lily go? There's Lily. I'm going to say nobody actually would have had the chance to attack it right now. It's This is a very fast creature as well. Not even as well, or no? Actually, yeah, Azul would have had the right chance over. to attack it, so Azul is going to try to attack it. Oh, well, I know what to do. I know what to do. Get the get the general to freaking send to freaking. Azul's going to miss. God damn it! Yeah, and as this flies by, uh, the other lightning orb's turn is going to go up now. So this one's going to come down to attack Lily. This one's going to there and there. I don't remember how fast these things are, but I don't think it matters too much. All right, time for roll twenty. And I'm going to have. Uh, do layer, token layer. Do more appear. And how they're going to come. How fast is that Thunderbird? The actuality speak for the uh, speed for the rock. It would not be able to do this because it is actually a rock. By the way, name of the session: Don't rock the boat. Boo! Oh. Sorry. All right, so we're going to take 20, take 20 damage from that pun. <laughs> I've, I've heard that joke about 80 times this week already, so... Goddamn. I'm immune to the joke. <laughs> uh... I'm to save from the poor joke. But, um, yeah, I'm, it, it actually wouldn't be able to move this fast, but I'm saying it can, because... This is a up. special fire rock, what, lightning. We're, we're taking away the MXD from <laughs> over for that pun. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I don't actually have eight guys in range, I don't get eight attacks. All right. So, Dwarf up there is fine. The Baron gets hit for 12 damage. I don't actually have his AC listed here. Hmm. Now I do. Yeah, P gets hit. 
for that. Then we have going down. We have this one tagging here. We'll miss. Miss. That one would have been over here. Would have been able to hit. That one would have been up here, actually. So attacking Mara. That'll be able to do 13 lightning damage. Everyone wants to attack Mara. Down here. This one here will attack that door for 12 lightning damage. And I'm also going to say pretty much everybody roll a deck save. Oh, jeez. Pretty much everybody roll a deck save. Everybody? Everybody. Everybody. Serena crit hers. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh. You're looking for, I'm going to say, 12. Oh, good. Yeah, you're, you're looking for 12, so just tell me if you fail. Mara fails, Alana fails. Alana was also on the broom. Yes. Oh. Okay, then. And I'm going to say half of the dwarves fail, because I don't feel like figuring that out. So I'm immune to whatever's happening. No. Alana, Good try. as the bird flies by, the gust of wind it brings with it knocks you off the broom and onto, your, onto the ground. You land back here, and you take 1d6 damage. You are prone. <sighs> Um, Mara also goes prone as she is knocked to the ground by the gust of wind. Do I still have at least have the broom with me? Like the broom is still going to be floating there in essence. It's still right next to you. You can get right back on it, but you were knocked off it by the wind. And then that's all that's going to happen this time. Next, we're coming back up to the dwarves' turn and Oscar, and you hear him call out, "Quickly, ready the ballista!" Harpoon shots! Bring that thing down on its next pass! Oh, geez. And at that, he's going to jump over the edge here. And he's going to run over here to assist the nearest dwarf ally, etc., of him. And Reese will be back. Dog bumped the power core. Good to know. And he is going to raise his hammer up, and he is going to smack it down on this thing. And he misses the first time, but he crits the second. Uh, and that's enough to kill it with that crit. Now then, everything else. I'm just going to do this again, and I'm going to say pretty much every dwarf is going to attack the one next to Mara. And they all are also technically getting advantage, so they don't need as much to hit this time. So I'm going to say, like, five of them hit? Yeah, five of them hit sounds like a good number. 10, 12, 14, 22, so 11 damage. Meanwhile, the three of them, down, or everything down here... You can see that some of the dwarves are rushing to try to get all this taken care of, clear this area out so that they can properly operate the harpoons. And these dwarves down here are going to move into position to properly hit it with their weapons, and I'm just going to roll their weapon attacks normally because it'll be easier that way. What doop, doop, doop. Miss hit, miss hit. So you're going to take that, and you're going to take this. All right, Serena's turn. Actually, before that would have happened, this cleric would have gone down here and he would have healed, because I forgot he could have do that, done that. Uh, good job, me. Roll the one. So, Falana's going to get back four health. All right. I live! Stupid dog. No, you don't. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. <sighs> Falana just got four health, which I put in for... Uh, why did you skip over me? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, how, how did Falana get full health? Because healer. one of the dwarf priests healed her. You actually made it on the perfect timing because because you uh, came back just as she got healed. Yeah. All right. Good time to do cure <laughs> cure light wounds on the elf yep. on the goddamn elf. So Falana's gonna get back ten more health. Alright, well, I should at least get you going for a little while. Alright. Alright. Alright, and next up is Azul's turn, so Azul is just gonna probably 
Actually, no, Zul. Monks can take the bonus action to dash, right? Yes. It costs a key point. Zul yeah, will take the key point. I think. I. There is another way to do it, but I forget how. Yeah, and Azul uh, will just dash normally to get to this far. No, wait, other... cunning action does it, so you that would be like yes. rogue too. So yeah, it has to be a rogue to do it bonus for free. Yeah, so I actually had to pay the key point to do it normally, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so she just essentially double dashed to get down to here because going to try to help clear this out when time comes. Alana's turn. Half your movement to get back up, the rest of your movement to get on the broom. Yep. Um... Do I know anything about this? About the, the Thunderbird. Um, it's a really cool car. <laughs> yeah, you can roll an Arcana on it. One, 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 one. Ah, eh, close enough. What you know about it is that it is a creature of lightning. It is very likely immune, if not healed, by the very lightning it creates, and that. You don't know what could have sent it, to be honest. Can I do an Arcana check for any possible weak, discernible weaknesses? Sure. 